Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. Today, we're going to talk about Dark Side of the Ring on Terry Bam Bam Gordy of the Fabulous Freebirds. So this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, they told his life story. It was a biography of Terry Gordy, and I, I think it was a pretty good one. And it was one of the better episodes of Dark Side of the Ring. So to hit some of the bright spots um, and expand on things a little bit, uh, Mick Foley called the Fabulous Freebirds the original cool heels. Of course, they became huge stars in the Dallas promotion, but they were actually stars before they got to Dallas. And um, yes, they actually are the precursors to the Four Horsemen who formed in like 1985. The Fabulous Freebirds as a tag team of just Terry Gordy and Michael Hayes was formed in the late 70s, I think 1978 or thereabouts. Um, Buddy Roberts was added to the team in like 1980 by Bill Watts, where they drew huge money uh, working in the Mid-South Territory. And one of the stories of uh, Terry Gordy is the story of his friendship with uh, Michael Hayes. And uh, no matter where you look, you get the same story that if it's no Hayes, no Gordy. There are so many stories of uh, of promoters wanting to work with Terry Gordy because he was so good. But they kind of was like, eh, on Michael Hayes. You know, there was a uh, Michael Hayes on, in Slam Wrestling told a story of a promoter who uh, had pissed him off. He didn't name the promoter, but the promoter had pissed him off, essentially, and he was probably going to quit. And uh, at this point in time, him and Terry Gordy had been friends for a little while, but they hadn't been friends for a long time. And uh, he was leaving the territory, and Gordy said, if you leave, I'm leaving, too. And this became a big deal to Michael Hayes because at the point at this point in time, Terry Gordy had a small guarantee, which is extremely rare in the territory days. And um, despite the fact that he had a son, he was willing to sacrifice that guarantee that if these guys did not like Michael Hayes, he was not going to stick around. And this was in the 70s, thereabouts. Um, it became another issue in Mid-South with Bill Watts. Bill Watts absolutely hated Michael Hayes. He didn't like his work. He wanted Michael Hayes to be Terry Gordy's manager, actually. This was a story that was told not only by Michael Hayes, but also in um, The King of New Orleans, which was the book on the Junkyard Dog and Mid-South Wrestling. He tells the story that uh, Terry Gordy wanted, they wanted Terry Gordy as a single. They didn't want Michael Hayes at all. Uh, Hayes insisted on wrestling. So um, Bill Watts recruited uh, Dale Hay, who's uh, wrestling under the name Buddy Roberts from Canada and brought him down as sort of the veteran. And that created the threesome known as the Fabulous Freebirds. They were already a tag team before then, but Bill Watts made them a trio. And then they went to draw huge money working with the Junkyard Dog, specifically in the Superdome. Uh, they drew 26000 feuding with the Junkyard Dog, specifically the main event was the Junkyard Dog versus Michael Hayes. On the undercard was Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts versus Dusty Rhodes and Buck Robley, and they were in a bull rope match. While um, this story was all around Junkyard Dog being blinded, I'll have to go into the whole story of, you know, uh, the hair versus hair thing, which led to the blunt Junkyard Dog being blind for a little while, to, you know, his miraculous comeback and return at the Dome. This led to a $183,000 gate that was pretty high for the time. Um, ended up being broken by Larry Zabisco versus uh, Bruno San Martino. I think it was the next week they wrestled at Shea Stadium in New York and broke it. So, But the uh, Fabulous Freebirds were incredibly popular as a team before they even went to Dallas. And they made a ton of money. And Terry Gordy was always the linchpin of that because he was so good. They talked a lot in Dark Side of the Ring about Terry Gordy in Japan, how he basically went over there alone because Michael Hayes and uh, Buddy Roberts, who is 15 years older than these guys. I think Hayes is two years older than Gordy and Buddy Roberts is 15 years older than Michael Hayes. Um, and he had retired and had called it quits. And this is where they brought in Jimmy Garvin to be the tag team partner for Michael Hayes and WCW while Terry Gordy was in Japan. And uh, in his book, Stan Hansen talked a lot about Terry Gordy in Japan because they were tag team partners for a long time. To give you a quick summary of how that worked out, they started teaming in 1987. Um, and he tells the stories in the book 
about Terry Gordy liking to drink. You know, that was his big thing. He didn't mention the drugs as much. He focused mostly on the drink. And that uh, Terry Gordy didn't really know his limits. You know, he's a big dude, so he drinks a lot. And at one time, he had fallen asleep in a restaurant. And the Japanese guys couldn't wake him up. They were, you know, doing the old smack in the face. They talk about this uh, in the dark side of the ring. People were just smacking him in the face, trying to wake him up. But he, they couldn't get him to wake up. But And he was also so big that they couldn't move him. And they had to get like four or five guys to get him out of out of the booth. You know, he was so big that they had to get multiple people to get him out of the booth and carry him to his hotel room. Um, three years later, of course, uh, Terry Gordy is being groomed to be the replacement for Stan Hansen as the top gaijin in all Japan pro wrestling. Um, but he's, of course, still having some issues with a uh, drink. And then he has some behavioral issues as well. It, uh, Stan Hansen tells the story about the U.S.-Japan Wrestling Summit, which you guys probably have heard a lot about. If you haven't, it was a super show in which the WWF, All Japan, New Japan, and some other promotions worked together on one card. Uh, Terry Gordy was supposed to wrestle Hulk Hogan. Um, if you look up on Wikipedia, it says, for undocumented reasons, uh, Terry Gordy was replaced by Stan Hansen. In Stan Hansen's book, he says that he, Terry Gordy knew that he was being groomed to be the top star, the top gaijin, let's say, for all Japan pro wrestling and didn't want to lose to Hulk Hogan. So he backed out of the match and it was replaced with Stan Hansen. So you get some of that stuff too, but it was done out of respect because he wanted to protect that position and protect that spot and didn't want to lose because the, the person who was being booked against Hogan had to lose. This is shortly after WrestleMania six. So, you know, Hogan ain't doing no job. So I guess the best you could do is disqualification or something like that. Right. So, uh, Gordy refused to lose. He was replaced by Hanson. And then um, Terry Gordy got the torch officially from Stan Hanson later in 1990. And around the same time, uh, Hanson tells a story about Terry Gordy having, he, he said his heart stopped in a nightclub in Rapongi. But he doesn't say whether it's drugs or alcohol that caused this, this issue. But that Terry Gordy had heart issues and Rapongi and Stan Hansen had to replace him in matches. And then ultimately, um, we know the story that, you know, Gordy started having some real serious issues with his weight in Japan, tearing both of his uh, ACLs. This was talked about in Dark Side of the Ring. And then ultimately, his time in Japan is put in really high jeopardy after he overdoses on pills, he ended up in a coma. Um, this became a very pivotal moment for the career and life of Terry Gordy because he became a completely different person. And uh, there's a reason why you don't hear a lot about Terry Gordy after 1993, but it's actually very frightening to see, you know, uh, the, the far away look in his eyes. And they played clips of the RF video that would come out some years later of him just not being able to remember things and just kind of looking dumbfounded. And just the the eyes that are like wide open, like really wide open and um, just not being able to get it. It just wasn't there. And if you look at him just a few years earlier, he was so full of life, so full of energy. You look at his work, his work has changed dramatically. And um, they talked about the struggles of this time. He became a completely different person, you know, had to relearn how to walk, had to relearn how to wrestle. You know, he had severe permanent brain damage from doing drugs and uh, he continued to do it of course and uh, this ended up being like a really difficult time for everybody I make Foley tell stories about you know being on the indies and seeing Terry Gordy there and thinking that people are not really appreciating him and part of that is because they didn't see the best of him because a lot of it was not you, you weren't able to see it like if you if it was 1999, I mean the guy died in 2001. If it's like 1999 or 2000, um, unless you're into tape trading, how much fabulous Freebirds material are you act? Do you have actually have access to? You don't have access to a lot. And anything that you've seen of him after 1993. So if you saw him as Smoky Mountain, like I did, if you saw him as the Executioner in WWF, of course, which I saw that. 
you know, then you didn't really get the full Terry Gordy experience. And um, it's truly sad that, you know, this guy passed away. And even to this day is extremely unappreciated. But Gordy is in the same class as like the Von Erics, Gino Hernandez, the Junkyard Dog. There's just so many of those guys from the 80s, the late 70s, 80s territory era where they made tons of money. They partied too hard. They drank. They smoked. They popped pills. And then so many of them died around 40 thereabouts, you know, uh, Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, R Rick Rude, you know, there's so many of those guys and Terry Gordy is among them. But unlike those guys, his heyday was in Japan. So in the United States, a lot of people just know him as, you know, one of the fabulous Freebirds. They don't really know how good he's, he was. All right. But that's it pretty much. Uh, what did you guys think of the episode of Dark Side of the Ring? Let me know and I'll talk to you guys later. Tell me what's worse than learning all that you led to believe was all horse crap. They distort so question as if you...